Hello everyone, this is video 5 of chapter 4. In this video, we'll go through a couple of examples of um, writing out the dual of a LP problem following the observations we have made in the last page of our previous video with the, the observations of the connections between them. Okay, so here is our first example. So, okay, so this is our problem. So this is the objective function we want to uh, minimize. And then we have two constraints here, and then with three variables, x1, x2, and x3. So let's look at a little bit of a detail. So um, the first constraint carries an equal sign, and the second constraint is less than equal, and the three variables the first two are restricted, x3 is unrestricted. Okay, so this is a minimization problem. So first we notice that. So what I put here in the bracket are important comments. So we spotted that this constraint here carries the wrong direction of inequality. We need to fix that first. Okay, so for a minimization problem, we need to have bigger than or equal as inequality in the constraint. So we will simply multiply both sides here by negative 1, and then I repeat the whole problem one more time. So minimizing unchanged, and this one now is bigger than equal, and then everything, all the signs here are switched. Okay? Now, from this problem, we can um, simply follow that um, summary table we had and to set up the um, the dual, so we have two constraints here, and which means we will need two variables, y1 and y2, when each one corresponds to each constraint. y1 corresponds to the first constraint, which is an equal sign, so it's unrestricted variable. And y2 corresponds to the second one, so it's restricted. Okay? Also pay attention that x3 is unrestricted. This is highlighted. It has consequences. Okay, so let's look at the dual. So the dual, you can follow the table there, minimum, change into maximum. Um, the objective function would be the, co um, the constant term here. So I will be 7 times y1 minus 11 times y2. That'll be what you maximize, okay? And then um, the number of constraint here would be the number of the variables there. I will write out for x1 and then one for x2 and one for x3. And then the right-hand side here would be the same as the coefficient of the objective function, okay? And then if the variables are restricted, then you would have less than equal sign. And then here the last one, for x3, this here we got equal sign. Why do we have that? Well, that's because x3 is unrestricted, and this would give you an equality in the constraint. Okay? And then you have to list your variables. So y1 is unrestricted for this reason we discussed here and y2 is restricted. So this becomes the dual. Okay? So it will be very handy to have um, that slide, that summary by your side, and uh, if you are not fluent in this yet, and then do step by step following all the, all the changes you need to make following um, that summary. Okay, to solidify um, our knowledge, let's take another example to write out the dual. Okay, so here um, the problem um, here is a maximization problem. I have two variables, x1 and x2, and I have three constraints. And then x1 is unrestricted, x2 is restricted. Okay, so this is a maximization problem, and that means I need to have um, less than equal sign. 
So I spot that. The second one here has the wrong inequality and I need to change that first. Okay, so I can simply multiply negative 1 on this second constraint and then I get this one here, get negative, a less than equal sign, okay? And now I have a maximization problem and I can just follow the, the summary table and then to form the dual. So I have three variables now I need to introduce. So I introduce y1 for the first constraint, which has a less than equal sign, so y1 is restricted. y2 for the second inequality, so y2 is restricted. And then y3 for the third one, which carries an equal sign, therefore this variable is unrestricted. Okay, And then um, let's see how we can set this up. Okay, so here is the dual. So we change maximum into minimum, and the objective function is obtained by the dot product of the constant vector with my variable y. That's what I have. And then I will have um, the number of constraints. I will have two, x1 and x2. How do you obtain them? Well, you go down each column as you add up, like you transpose the A matrix here. Mm -hmm. And then you look at x1, which is unrestricted, that means the first constraint shall be equal, and x2 is restricted, that means the second one should have bigger than equal sign. Okay, And then you list your constraint on the variable, as we discussed here. Okay, So once you get a hold on it, it's actually rather straightforward. Okay, So you can practice more. Uh, read more examples in the textbook and uh, hopefully find this quite easy. Okay, hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.